What's shaking bacons? Are you ready to talk about things that absolutely terrify me? Well, stupendous! So am I! I guess? Uh, I've been telling you I'm gonna talk about the Fermi Paradox, which terrifies me. But in order to do so, we first need to continue talking about other terrifying things. I've already talked to you about the Kardashev scale. One of the reasons I did that is because that completely ties in with the Fermi Paradox. I was writing out this video and I thought, I probably need to break this into three pieces because otherwise it's gonna be like an hour and a half of me talking excited nonsense about space things that terrify me. And I don't think anybody has time for that. So I'm splitting it into three videos. Part one is this one, Things That Terrify Me. And we're gonna be talking about the great filter today. And no, I don't mean the one that most Instagram models use. Am I right? <laughs> Just like I did in the Kardashev video, I have linked the space music that I was listening to at the time that I was writing this in the description box below. If you want to open that in a separate tab and listen to it as I speak, that'll kind of get you in the mood that I was feeling as I was writing and working and thinking about these things. It's also great because it gives the artist credit and prevents me from having to deal with content claims. Alrighty, here we go. The origin of the great filter concept originates with some dude named Robin Hansen, who is a professor of economics? What's an economist doing talking about space? All right, that's cool. He's written such books as The Elephant in the Brain and The Age of M, Work, Love, and Life When Robots Rule the Earth, which is about brain emulation. As a side note, in case you don't know what brain emulation is, it's basically the idea that you can scan the brain and then have the ideas uploaded to a computer. And yet he's a professor of economics? Go home, Robin Hanson, you drunk. And he's actually an expert on uh, like idea futures and the market and the human condition, apparently. And he's also an associate somewhere. And somehow he ended up coming up with the idea of the great filter, which was quite frankly, probably, let's just be honest, it was probably already an idea that somebody had somewhere, but he coined the phrase in an essay he wrote in 1996 called the great filter. Are we almost past it? Seriously, who is this guy? He's gotta be like the best economics professor ever because he sounds like completely out of this world. Eh, space pun. <laughs> All right, so that's cool and everything. And this Robin guy sounds like a hella dope professor of economics, but what? What is the Great Filter? What is this related to the Fermi Paradox? Well, the Great Filter ties into the Fermi Paradox, and I'll talk about that in another video. The Great Filter basically is a theory that is one of many explanations trying to answer why we have not encountered, as far as we know, any other alien civilizations. Because with so many stars and systems, and believe you me, that's an extreme understatement. There are so many stars and systems in the galaxy it's in it's like it's, it's something your mind can't even comprehend i know mine can't but with so many of them just with the probability and the odds there's got to be something out there right so hansen speculated that the reason why maybe we haven't heard anything is because somewhere along the development of a species timeline something happens and that something whatever it may be prevents that species or civilization from developing any further to the point that interstellar travel and communication are possible. Examples of a great filter would be like the civilization just destroying itself before it reaches that point, a gamma ray burst completely wipes out all of the life on the planet or in the system, you know, possibly even having simple life forms exist at all, like at all, might just be getting beyond the great filter. Why exactly would this terrify me? This sounds like just a simple theory, right? Wrong. The first reason this is terrifying to me is that we don't know if this is true, where in the timeline of a civilization the great filter occurs. This means the filter might be yet to come for us. <laughs> The happy assumption that we can go off of is that the filter is the simple life thing. Like just the fact that we exist at all uh, and that we were started as simple life on our planet is us getting through the great filter. That's like the, the best case scenario, honestly, is that we have yet to face whatever this is. And then another filter could possibly be the first step into multicellular or complex life, which is what we are. And apparently, even just that is really difficult to find so far, and I don't think we have found 
any sign of multicellular life. If we do, that's when we're screwed. Because if we find other multicellular complex life and this theory is true, that means we have yet to get to the filter. Which means we may have some unknown entity coming to play in this where human beings get utterly wiped out and annihilated because we haven't gotten there yet. It's terrifying because if we haven't gotten there yet, our civilization with the rapid rate of increase that we have with development, as I talked about in the Kardashev scale, we are rapidly hurtling toward whatever it may be. Now, the second reason this is terrifying, assuming that the great filter is behind us. So the first reason it terrifies me is if it's before us, that sucks because we gotta pass through the gauntlet. The second reason it terrifies me is if it's already behind us because A, we don't know what exactly it was, right? And we don't know what to look for to spot it or understand it or try to learn more about it. You know, and assuming we made it through already, I think is incredibly anthropocentric. Humans, I feel, tend to be very ego-driven. And we, I mean, that's the same thing with in the beginnings of astronomy when people thought that the sun and the stars all orbited around the earth. You know, that kind of thinking is not conducive to long-term growth. As a civilization, we can't grow if we constantly think that the universe revolves around us or that we are special sauce somehow. And because we haven't seen and we don't know what to look for in regards to the Great Filter, that means as far as we might know, we're alone. And that also means that if we haven't seen anything else that may have passed through the Great Filter, that we might be the first. Because we've heard and seen nothing other than a few random radio bursts, maybe speculation about Oumuamua. We've heard nothing that has indicated that there is anyone other than us out there in the universe. Meaning that amongst all of those millions and billions and zillions of stars and dark matter and galaxies and cosmic dust and asteroids and giant chunks of matter floating endlessly in a vacuum that we are alone hurtling along on a small planet that is out of our control in the backwaters of the milky way circling a yellow dwarf star fragile with nothing to protect us except the knowledge that we already have which isn't a whole lot and yet we somehow might be the first and that means the responsibility is on our shoulders. And that is scary to me. So anyway, what do you think about the Great Filter? If you've heard about this before, tell me, do you agree with this theory? Do you think that there is some kind of roadblock or test that civilizations have to pass in order to continue growing? Do you think we're beyond it? I honestly don't think we are. You should let me know in the comments below and you know, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to. I will be having two more videos coming out in the Things That Terrify Me series and I look forward to talking about them even though it's scary to contemplate. I will catch you guys later.